Well, good morning, church family, on this very cold Sunday morning. I'm very sorry that we're not able to be in church today like usual. I look forward to being able to have church uh, this coming Wednesday night and next Sunday, of course, and and uh, getting into the new year and getting it off to a good start. But today, we are at home, and, and we are looking out on a very cold world, and I wanted to give you some words of exhortation and encouragement today, if I could, from God's Word. And so I have just a short meditation that I'd like to share with you today about a cold heart. So today I understand that the temperature outside is somewhere between negative 10 and zero, and I think most of us would consider that to be pretty cold. Uh, I know I would, and, um, and so it's probably the coldest temperature that we've had here in, in Ottawa in, in quite a while. And uh, yet when we think about cold temperatures, you know, the coldest temperature ever recorded in the contiguous United States was a lot colder than it is today. As a matter of fact, uh, the coldest temperature ever recorded in the contiguous United States was negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That was recorded at Rogers Pass, Montana on January the 20th in 1954. So negative 70 is cold. But you know we can get even colder than that because the coldest temperature ever recorded in the entire United States was negative 80 degrees uh, that was recorded on January the 23rd in 1971 at Prospect Creek, which is in central Alaska, north of Fairbanks, negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine that? Uh, that is cold. Uh, but you know what? There are colder places than that. Uh, so uh, what do you suppose the coldest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth is? Uh, the coldest temperature ever recorded in the world happened in a place called Antarctica. That makes sense, uh, the South Pole. Uh, it was recorded at Vostok Station on, on uh, the 21st of July in 1983. Uh, that day, they recorded a temperature of negative 129. Negative 129, that is, that is cold. But you know what, if you were to go to the moon, and if you were to be on the moon at night, it would get even colder than that. You know what? The temperature on the moon at night can drop to as low as negative 208 degrees. Negative 208. That is cold. <clears throat> well, where would we go if we wanted to find a temperature colder than negative 208 uh, there's, there's, there are probably uh, lots of places we could go, but let's just go to outer space, okay? In outer space, the temperature is somewhere around the baseline, and it, and it can vary in outer space. The temperature varies, but, but no matter uh, what uh, the temperature is, it is cold around negative 453 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 453 and you say, that is so cold. That is unimaginably cold. Uh, how much colder can it get than negative 453 degrees? And the answer to that question is the coldest possible temperature, something called absolute zero. And uh, that is the point at which uh, there are no motion, there's no motion of, of uh, molecules, uh, of atoms, uh, and no heat. Okay, and so, and so that that temperature is about negative 460 degrees. That's, that is, the term for that is absolute zero, and that is cold. But you know what, folks? There is something in this world that is even colder and more dangerous than a cold temperature like we have today outside, and that is a cold heart. So what is a cold heart? You know, a cold heart has certain characteristics. A cold heart is a stony heart. Uh, you know, uh, somebody was telling me that uh, they were telling people that went, went to the Chiefs game last night that they should bring a little piece of cardboard with them to stand on so that they wouldn't be so cold standing on the concrete uh, of, the, of the stadium. 
Uh, why is why why is that? Because because stone is cold. You know, we we even we even have a saying for that. You know, as cold as stone. I mean, stone is is cold because it doesn't absorb heat rapidly, and so generally, we put our hand on some stone, it's going to feel cold to the touch, or at least cool. And so, a cold heart is a stony heart. You know, the Bible warns us about having that kind of a heart, a cold and stony heart. Uh, but also, a cold heart is an insensitive heart. It is a heart that, you know, if it's stony and hard as a rock, it's not very sensitive. It doesn't really hear well uh, the voice of God. Uh, it's also an unbelieving heart. In fact, that's, that's how we, we, we get a cold heart is, is through unbelief. Unbelief has a chilling effect. It's like putting our heart into the freezer. Uh, an unbelieving heart is a heart that doesn't hear or believe in the word or the promises of God. Uh, but a cold heart is also an uncaring heart. It's an unloving heart. It's a heart that doesn't really care about other people, uh, cares only about itself. A cold heart is also a deceived heart. It is a heart that has been deceived by sin. Uh, sin will lead us away uh, from, from God and therefore uh, will make our hearts cold. Uh, so a cold heart is deceived. And, and you know what? If, if, a, if a heart becomes cold enough, it will be a lifeless heart. It will be a place where there is no life, uh, no warmth, no heat. Uh, and I'm talking really uh, right now about uh, the fact that, that it's possible for somebody to have no spiritual life in Christ. That is true uh, for every unbeliever. For an unbeliever, uh, their heart is dead and cold in sin. And uh, even for us as Christians, you know, we can move away from God and we can, our hearts can cool uh, toward the Lord and the things of the Lord. And so we have a warning in Hebrews chapter number 3, verses 12 and 13. It says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be deceived or hardened, excuse me, any, any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of of sin. Okay, so again, sin is deceitful. Sin will harden. It will cool our hearts. It will turn our hearts into a stone. It will lead us away from God. And the farther away you get from God, the colder you will become. The colder your heart will become. And so what should you do? If you have a cold heart, what should you do to, 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 to solve that problem, to cure a cold heart? Well, if I was outside, if I went outside today, <clears throat> it wouldn't take me too long to get cold. And if I went out there and worked for a while shoveling snow or something like that, uh, then I would, I would get very cold very fast. And what would the solution be? The solution would be for me to come back in uh, to where it's warm and maybe to go and sit by the fire that, that, that you can see there behind me and warm up by that fire. And so if I were outside right now, if, and the solution for, for being cold would be to come in and get close to the source of heat. And so the way to cure a cold heart is to draw near to God by faith. It's to come out of the cold of unbelief and sin and, and, and a lack of love and the deceptiveness of the lies of the devil. Come out from the cold and draw near to the fire of God. And you know what the Bible tells us? That God is a fire. And it tells us that he is a consuming fire. He is a purifying fire. Uh, yes, he will consume the dross of sin, but also uh, for people who will draw near to him by faith, he will, he will purify us. He will burn away the, 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 the dross of sin in our lives and, <clears throat> and make us a holy and pure people like him. And so uh, God is a fire in the sense that he purifies people who will come to him by faith. You know, God wants to make your life clean and pure. He wants you to be holy as he is holy. And so the way to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ, more holy like him, is to draw closer to him, to live close to him. Uh, because if you're living close to God, you won't be comfortable in the coldness and the deceitfulness of sin. Uh, you'll, you will find that, that your sin and, and, and all those things cannot stand in the presence of a holy God. And so uh, God is a fire. He, he will purify the dross of sin in our lives, but also God is a source of light. He gives light to us. And so the closer we draw to God, the more we will see and understand the light of his truth and his word. 
And uh, also, God, uh, like a fire, kindles heat. He can make us hot like he is hot. You know, the, at the, on the day of Pentecost, the God of heaven came to live inside believers like you and me. Uh, and, and the Holy Spirit uh, came upon these believers. And you might remember in the book of Acts chapter 2, it says that there was a visible manifestation of the, the, of the indwelling of the Spirit on these believers that, that cloven tongues of fire came and rested upon them. And that fire is, was a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So the fire of God lives within the heart of a believer. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit of zeal lives within you, and He wants to set you on fire for Him. He wants to kindle a heat uh, for Him, uh, a zeal uh, to, to love Him and to live close to Him and to serve Him and to give your life to Him and to make your life all about Him and uh, to worship Him. And, and all of those things, that's what God does in our lives. As we draw close to Him, we allow the Holy Spirit to have His way in our lives. We are filled with the Spirit, and the Spirit of God gives us a zeal for God. And it is God's will for us that we have a zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're not supposed to live in coldness. We're not supposed to live even in a lukewarmness of complacency and apathy, but we are supposed to be all the way on fire for God. You know, sometimes people talk about people being on fire for God, and they make fun of those people uh, for being uh, so sold out to God. Uh, but our prayer should be, like the song that we sing in church many times, Set my soul afire, Lord. That's, that's what God wants to do in our lives, and that happens as we draw near to Him, as we live close to Him, as we spend more time with Him in His presence, reading His Word, in prayer, in the presence of His people, uh, doing the things that we know He wants us to do, listening to the leading of the Spirit in our lives. He makes us uh, on fire with zeal, with enthusiasm to serve and live for Him. And then another thing that a fire does is it provides warmth. And um, in the same way, uh, as a person draws close to God, that person will be, will be warmed with the love of Jesus Christ, that God's love will become more real in your heart, and you will start loving people, the people around you, with the love of God himself. My friend, God does not want you to have an uncaring, insensitive heart for the needs of others. He wants you to have a warm and loving heart. Uh, that cares for other people around you. And, and so these are all the things that God will do for you as a child of God if you will draw near to Him. And my friend, if you are living out there in the coldness of unbelief, you are not saved, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, sin is having its way in your life, uh, you have been deceived and your heart is hard, then let me tell you something. If you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you will uh, turn to Him, to be your one and only Savior from sin, He will take away the stony heart of unbelief that's in you, and He will give you a new, clean, tender, warm heart of love for Him and service for Him, and then you can start living for the Lord Jesus Christ who loved you so much that He died on the cross to save you. He rose from the dead so that you could have everlasting life. If you will draw near to Him by faith, you will find all these things in Jesus Christ. And so I just want to encourage you today on this very cold Sunday, I want to encourage you, my friend, to make this year of 2024 a year of getting closer to God. Make it a year of, of closeness to God so that He can fill you with His Spirit and He can give you a warm and pure and tender and loving and zealous heart for Him. And I also want to encourage you, make some time to draw close to Him today. Make some time on this Lord's Day when you're at home and it's quiet. You take some time to read His Word and to pray. Take some time as a family to gather together and worship God together. Let's draw near to God because in the Lord Jesus Christ, we find light, we find warmth, we find love, and we find life. God bless you all. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday night, Lord willing. In the meantime, uh, we will, we, I will sign off, 
And I trust that you will have a wonderful Lord's Day together as a family at home. God bless you all.